Hey there! In today's video, we're gonna learn how to track chatbot activity. Because a chatbot is practically a website that's embedded inside of your website. And uh, from GA4 perspective, it's not accessible via standard tracking methods. Now, chatbot softwares that are available out there, they offer GA4 integration commonly, but the problem is consent mode and practically the chatbot software being a third party often dealing with personally identifiable information which is off limits completely when we talk about GA4. So I'm going to show you in this video how to do the native chatbot tracking and uh, when I say <laughs> tracking I mean practically we are going to learn how to track when somebody opens chatbot on your website and tie that information back to the traffic and user data that you have available in GA4. Now, here we are in Data Driven U website, and the easiest way to start a debug session is number one, to install GA Debug Chrome plugin on your browser, and then simply by turning that plugin on, it reloads the page and sends the data here to the debug session in GA4. You need to learn to be patient with the debugger because sometimes it doesn't load super fast. Now we see it loaded uh, the data that was sent to GA4 here. The page view event is here, location is the home page. You can click on a link just to make sure that the debug session works properly. So we see here, it said click to unpause then there is another page view. Location is skills membership, the one that we see here. As you can see, there is a 50 bucks off membership offer that closes in a couple of days on Data Driven U. But regardless of whether this offer is active when you watch this video, Skills Plus membership is a kick ass program, and Jeff is a real guru when it comes to paid media and analytics tracking and all things the data driven marketer needs to uh, you know be savvy about uh, besides jeff is gonna kill me for calling him a guru because he doesn't like that name but he definitely is because he knows what he's talking about so to go back to this video and tracking of the chatbot let's open it here now and back to the debugger Make sure to unpause whenever it's stuck here. Again, be patient for the events to show up here. But we should see, okay, chat box activated here. Now, how did I actually send this event to Google Analytics 4? For this purpose, I was using Google Tag Manager. And this container here has a trigger that's element visibility type. Selection method is CSS selector. And then there is this cumbersome selector down here, which well, I'll show you in just a second here. You want to choose from the firing options here, whether you want it to fire once per page or every time an element appears. And this is the key part here. You want observe DOM changes to be switched on because that way you'll be able to track whenever this element, this nice form here, whenever it appears, Tag Manager will be waiting for it and then triggering the event that's sending the chat box activated to Google Analytics 4. So how did we find this element selector that's identifying the chat box being open? Well, practically you hit Command-Shift-I to look at the developer console here, open the elements tab, and then find this chat box in the DOM, which is document object model. That's the abbreviation here as well. And if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that chat box is actually a website that's embedded on your website. By scrolling up the DOM tree here, you find this document element here and another HTML tree down there. So it means that 
this is where this new website is starting inside of your website and you are not able to access any of these elements down here via searching the DOM tree that's on your website. So the trick here is to open and close this chatbot here to see what happens and if you noticed outside of the document element here which is the chatbot itself there is a div that says div class container gradient dash sc and some random character string but when I close it this part here changes into dkx etc when I open it changes into hspr etc so I copy the CSS class here go back to Google Tag Manager and use the element selector for selection method it would be way easier if we had an ID in this element if a div with an ID container chat box active appeared unfortunately we don't have it so we have to use the plan B which is the CSS selector and then we would say here CSS selector div then put a dot here which stands for the class and it says container gradient sc62 etc but beware for the spaces here in the class because any space that you find here should be replaced with a dot as you can see here we do have the space and it's replaced by the dot so between the zero and letter h there is a dot and here in the dome we see space between 0 and H so as you can see it's tricky to identify when the chatbot was open and let me show you on another example here is the website for Adworld Experience which is a kick-ass conference in Bologna Italy and our friend Gianpaolo is organizing the conference which is starting on Friday October 5th but if you take a look at their chatbot here when we open it and then inspect this element here again you will see that the document has been embedded here on your website so if we close and open this element here by clicking on the chatbot widget you can see that this iframe element with ID of this wicked you know string here changes its class from open to closed back to open back to closed so the identifier for this iframe would be again CSS selector because it does not rely on class only but you would put iframe hashtag and the ID and then dot for the class and put open and in that case Google Tag Manager would observe the changes in the DOM and wait for that element particularly to open and then it would trigger the event that's sent into GA4. I hope that you like this video and that you understand better uh, the implications of using integration of chatbot software with GA4 itself but have in mind that if you create an event like we did in this video you will be able to have a native tracking of your chatbot box being open and then tie that information back to the traffic and user and any other GA4 accessible information to understand better who is actually opening your chatbot and maybe why and where are they coming from. I hope you liked this video again. If you did, click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Talk to you soon.